This is the DAR Today podcast, and I'm your host, Brooke Bullmaster Stewart, the National Chair of the DAR Today podcast committee. Welcome to this, our first weekly podcast. You may remember we announced in previous episodes that we'd be changing from our longer monthly episodes to shorter ones, premiering every Monday. To help you get the links and notifications of these episodes, we ask that you subscribe on whatever platform it is you're experiencing this podcast. But in addition, if you're a DAR member, please check your email inbox for a special notice. In that, you'll be asked if you'd like to be sent an email with links to the previous month's episodes, all four episodes in one. But take note, we won't email you every week when an episode comes out. We wouldn't do that to your inbox. We want to make it that much easier to find us, and we do hope you sign up for those emails. But let's just jump right into this week's episode. First, we'll have a segment where we hear about a beautiful event hosted by the President General at the 56 Signers Memorial there in Washington, D.C. What a beautiful tribute to the signers of the Declaration of Independence. We'll also be taken on a special tour by our President General around the crown jewel of our DAR building complex, Memorial Continental Hall. So while today's episode features a lot on our American history and our tribute to the Founding Fathers, future episodes in this month will include an in-depth look at the history of the DAR library and also a segment on those wonderful volunteers who help us with our DAR membership applications. We hope you really like this new shorter format And if you do, please let us know in the comments. A few times a year, all of our executive board members, the vice presidents general, and our state regents all gather in Washington, D.C. These groups together make up the National Board of Management. Well, during this special week in October, the national chairs are invited to attend as well. And in this past October, many attended a very special wreath laying at the Memorial to the 56 Signers of the Declaration of Independence that lays on what is called Signers Island along the banks of Constitution Gardens Lake in the beautiful Constitution Gardens. This very special memorial was a gift from the American Revolution Bicentennial Administration and was dedicated on July 4, 1984. Its beauty was even more impressive on this autumn day as nearly 100 daughters arrived to pay tribute. Under the direction of our President General Pamela Wright, Chaplain General Virginia Lingelbach gave a very moving speech. We are honored to place a wreath at this memorial, which was built in part to commemorate the bicentennial of American independence. This memorial honors the men who risk everything to sign the Declaration of Independence. The granite stones include facsimiles of their signatures, the location of their homes, and their occupations. An inscription at the south end of the walk reads, and I quote, and for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. We then had the honor of hearing from our President General. It is my honor to pay respects to these men who sacrificed their lives and fortunes for our freedom. This often overlooked memorial was created by an act of Congress in April 1978, which authorized the Secretary of the Interior to memorialize the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence. The completed memorial was dedicated on July 2, 1984, 208 years after the Continental Congress voted in favor of independence. This memorial honors and celebrates the courage and vision of the American heroes who risked their lives to declare our independence from England. As President General, I am so proud that in the National Society's Americana Collection is a collection of all the original signatures of the signers. The last signature to be added, the rarest and most valuable, was that of Georgia signer Button Gwinnett, which was acquired in 2002. Our exhibit includes a biography, signature, and portrait for each of the 56 signers. 
The collection was on display last October for all National Board members to view. I am also proud to remind everyone that last year the National so Society contributed $250,000 to the Trust for the National Mall from the DAR insignia proceeds. This supported the redesign of this memorial in celebration of the 250th anniversary of our great nation. Thank you for joining me today for this special opportunity to pay our respects to these brave, heroic men. Thank you, Madam President General. <clears throat> Following the benediction, the wreath will be placed by the President General and Adele Lancaster, National Chair Constitution Week and all others are asked to remain in place until after the wreath has been placed, at which time... As Signers Island was not large enough for our whole assembly, we started our event on the banks of the lake and then processed to the island to officially lay the wreath and take photographs. The Declaration of Independence. It's a revolutionary document for a revolutionary statement. You cannot help but be stirred when you read those words. When Thomas Jefferson wrote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Well, even to this day, it's probably the most central difference between America and every other country in the world. And with regard to these unalienable rights, that was the first time anybody had bothered to write that down. When you turn the clock back and think about when Thomas Jefferson was writing that, how young he was, 33. What a statement it was, given the history of the world at the time. And you feel the excitement of being on the cusp of something so profound that it's hard to put into words. But in addition, besides telling us about the unalienable rights, this radical document was also roughly a 28 count indictment of King George. 56 signed the document, committed treason, trying to guarantee our right to pursue our own happiness what sort of men were these? Well, 24 were judges and lawyers, 9 were farmers and plantation owners, 11 were merchants, the remaining 12 were doctors, ministers, and politicians, well-educated men who knew full well that signing such a document would mean certain death if they were captured. How many of our DAR members are descended from these brave souls? Of these 56, 5 were tortured and subsequently died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Nine died fighting the Revolutionary War. This declaration that these 56 signers penned their names to, it goes well beyond what was needed in order to declare independence. It establishes a philosophical basis for a civil democracy in which all persons are guaranteed rights by virtue of their personhood. These political geniuses, they saw a new time for mankind, which is one with the thought that we can be free and we can make decisions for ourselves. This memorial to the 56 signers, here in this stretch of garden, may seem small, but the actions behind it, what it is celebrating, was the largest, grandest idea and experiment, one that carved and shaped our great nation. Let us always stay committed to these ideals, honoring the sacrifices of these patriots who endured much that we and all Americans might have a chance to see and participate in this free society.
Can you imagine the efforts required in building our national headquarters? Our magazine, The Atlantic Monthly at the time, contains wonderful information about the early days of Memorial Continental Hall. President General Cornelia Cole Fairbanks said in 1905, quote, We will appeal to the patriotism and loyalty of our daughters throughout the country to aid in founding here a temple of liberty in honor of those brave and noble men who purchased for us at the cost of their lives, the priceless heritage of freedom that we now enjoy. We are building not only for those who went before us, not only for those who are working now for this splendid object, but for those who shall come in the grand hereafter, when our country is still carrying out the lofty ideals of our society." End quote. The Continental Hall Committee reported in 1907 that, quote, the purpose of Memorial Hall, the National Revolutionary Monument at Washington, is to commemorate the rank and file of the war for independence. The sailor, the soldier, who carried the musket in the ranks, and that great reserve force, the women of the American Revolution. It has become our sublime privilege to erect a fitting memorial, a stately palace beautiful, which symbolizes not only for this, but for all coming generations, the eternal principles of patriotism which animated these soldiers of the line, these women of the spinning wheel." End quote. Please join me as we explore our crown jewel, Memorial Continental Hall. I'd love to share some history with you. One of my favorite items in the DAR library, which is the old auditorium in Memorial Continental Hall, is this beautiful clock that's on the cast iron railing. It was given by the Baltimore chapter to the National Society and made by J.E. Caldwell, the official jeweler of the DAR. The Maryland crest is at the top and the DAR insignia is at the bottom and it has brought joy to us for over a hundred years. And it's the inspiration for the insignia for the Balcony Volunteers. And so that makes everyone want to be a member of the Balcony Volunteer Committee. So I hope you love it as much as I do. So we're in the library still, which was the old auditorium from Memorial Continental Hall, our first auditorium, which had a seating capacity for about 2,000 people. If you look here, it was lit by these beautiful chandeliers, these uh, brass chandeliers. We know that a chapter from Kansas and a chapter from New York each paid for two of those. And Georgia State Society recently paid to have them refurbished. And I wonder if you're wondering what I didn't know until recently is how do they change the light bulbs on the chandeliers? Where well, they're on cable system and they lower them down, change the light bulbs, and then they raise them back up to whatever height they want. And of course, they're suspended from the beautiful uh, ceiling where the lay lights are. We're all familiar with the lay lights above the library, which was a project for Marianne Wright's administration. We leave you today with this quote by President Harry Truman. America was not built on fear. America was built on courage, on imagination, and an unbeatable determination to do the job at hand. Well, thanks for listening and be well, dear friends. Let's celebrate the stars and stripes forever. And remember, with all of your ancestors behind you, you are the result of the love of thousands. Well, this podcast was written and produced by the DAR Today Podcast Committee, and we are, as always, so grateful for President General Pamela Edwards Rouse Wright and Historian General Suzanne Heskey for their constant guidance. The National Society Daughters of the American Revolution is a nonprofit, non political, volunteer women's service organization dedicated to promoting patriotism, preserving American history, and securing America's future through better education for children. Members are all lineal descendants of those who supported the cause of independence in the Revolutionary War. For more information, please visit dar.org. This is the DAR Today podcast.